El Salvador is building the first Bitcoin city. The president, Najib Bukele, compared it to Alexandria built by Alexander the Great. What is this all about? Why do I find it incredibly inspiring? And also, why is Bitcoin's liquid sidechain important here? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this one, we talk about the Bitcoin city, which was just recently announced by the president of El Salvador, Najib Bukele. And we also cover the liquid sidechain, what it is and how it works, and also what role it plays in building the maybe new home for many Bitcoiners. So we were thinking of building Bitcoin city. Over there. There you have El Salvador, you have, the, you have the geothermal plant. Some people saw that. You have that in Berlin and Sulutan. And right next to, well, close to there, here you have the power plant. And close to there, you have the Golf, Golf of the Fonseca, the Fonseca Golf. The announcement itself was quite insane, with lots of fireworks and President Bukele entering the stage wearing a cap backwards and completely rocking it. You gotta remember, this is a president of a country. It's like a Joe Biden of El Salvador. A little bit of history here. Early in June, Jack Maulers and Najib Bukele announced Bitcoin as legal tender in El Salvador. Just three days later, the bill passed. While not everyone in El Salvador is happy with that law, and there's also a lot of protests going on, you gotta say the adoption is generally going upwards. Bukele mentioned that there are about 5 million El Salvadorans who are orange-pilled, and their whole population is just 6.5 million people, so that's 77%, which is a lot. Bukele also highlighted that El Salvador is fast in its development. They announced that they want to use a volcano for mining and the construction started just four weeks later, with a finish time of just 60 days. The speed in building infrastructure is of course irrelevant when you want to build a city from scratch. Now, what exactly is Bitcoin City? Samson Moe described it as the Singapore of the West. That's the goal at least. The Bitcoin City will have a circular shape and will be located close to a volcano. First, an older volcano that is already part of the grid will give energy to the city, but later on the new volcano will power the whole city. And also mine Bitcoin on top of that. The city is focused on attracting investors, building efficient public transport, hubs for digital education, and everything else a municipality needs. And the cherry on top is the center of the city, which is a gathering plaza with the Bitcoin logo in stone on the floor to last thousands of years. All of this sounds pretty crazy and wild, but it's at this stage not only just some weird idea, they are actually gonna do this. The funding for the city starts in 2022. Bitcoin City won't have capital gains, property or income taxes. The sovereign individual thesis is playing out right in front of our eyes. The only tax will be the 10% VAT, so value added tax, which is a regular sales tax. So if you buy a product, 10% goes to the government. Of the 10%, 5% are for making the town work, like garbage collection and so on. And the other 5% are to pay the bonds to pay the city. Which brings me to the next point. The Bitcoin bond, or volcano bond as they are called. This is quite a historic moment. There will be a series of bonds starting with a $1 billion bond backed by Bitcoin. Of the $1 billion, $500 million will be used to buy more Bitcoin, essentially the president doing a $500 million market buy, and the other half will be for infrastructure, especially energy infrastructure and mining. So how does the bond work? It's a 5-year bond with a 6.4% yield, which also turns into a Bitcoin dividend after those 5 years, because the Bitcoin gets sold off gradually and the profit gets shared with the bond investors. If Bitcoin reaches $1 million in 5 years, that would be an API of 146%. You can buy as little as $100 worth of the bond, and if you invest $100,000 or more, you also receive citizenship by investment. One question I have here is, what happens if Bitcoin is lower in 5 years? I don't think that will happen, but it is a possibility. So will the coins still be sold? This whole event could surely kick off a new wave of nation-state Bitcoin FOMO, so I'll be watching the game theory and see how much capital really flows into the bond. Now, to issue the bond, Liquid, a Bitcoin sidechain, is used. Liquid, compared to Lightning, is an actual blockchain. Blocks have a clearance time of 1 minute instead of 10 minutes. How does Liquid work? You can make transactions from Bitcoin to Liquid and receive LBTC. The opposite works as well and is known as Pack In and Pack Out, but is limited to specific nodes. This is at least what the user sees. Behind the scenes, the Bitcoin gets locked into a smart contract until you want to move LBTC back to BTC. Because you can't really move BTC to another chain, of course. You can only generate a token that reflects BTC. The big difference lies in how consensus is built. Consensus is completely different in Liquid. It's not using proof of work, but something called Elements, which is a consensus algorithm developed by Blockstream. It involves trust in functionaries. With Liquid, you need to trust the companies and institutions that form the consensus of the network. This is also known as proof of authority. 
Liquid is thereby not permissionless like Bitcoin. We get to the good and bad of this later on, don't worry. How the consensus works is that one random permission functionary node gets to create the block, show it to all other participants and two thirds of them need to agree with the block for it to be added to the blockchain. These functionary nodes are not the only nodes by the way. You can run a node yourself and use the different liquid features, which I come to in a minute. The only thing you can't do is secure the network, as you are not part of the list of consensus building companies. Now here's something that I believe is pretty crazy. In case liquid turns off for whatever reason, there are emergency keys that are able to access the Bitcoin held by the network, only if the network is down for an extended period of time. The keys are strictly powerless otherwise. I believe that there is a lot of trust involved that these kind of admin keys are not misused or the network gets turned off deliberately by the involved companies. I can very much understand the critique that this receives. Yes, the network would need to be offline for an extended amount of time, but still. To make things clear, you don't really need to trust Blockstream here. You first and foremost need to trust the companies that are part of the consortium. But anyway, Liquid is currently cheaper and faster, but of course less secure, involves more trust, is less decentralized and less censorship resistant, etc. Which is fine to some degree, because Liquid doesn't aim to replace Bitcoin at all. It's a sidechain for use cases where you can somewhat waive or forego the security and decentralization properties. So what are some of the use cases of Liquid? You could send Tether, the USD stablecoin over Liquid instead of using Ethereum or Tron or others. You can create your own token, similar to ERC20 on Ethereum but limited in functionality. You also have more built-in privacy options through confidential transactions. This makes CoinJoin easier, hides change outputs, you don't even see if someone sends LBTC or Tether. And similar to Zcash, you have this privacy by default, but you can also decide to show the amounts of your transactions if you decide to. What some understand in my eyes is that they believe that Liquid is a solution that should scale Bitcoin, similar to the Lightning Network. But that doesn't work out in my opinion. The block size is the same as with Bitcoin, and yes, the block time is 1 minute instead of 10 minutes, so you have 10 times more data throughput, but the transactions themselves are actually about 10 times as big as regular Bitcoin transactions, because of the confidentiality aspects. So after all, you end up with the same base layer scalability. To be honest, Liquid has not really found a wide adoption thus far. It would be interesting to watch how a Bitcoin sidechain develops in comparison to Ethereum sidechains and second layers like Lightning for example. And that's it for this video. I'm interested in your opinion on the Bitcoin CD, which in my eyes is a crazy idea but somewhat inspiring, and also your opinion on Liquid. Have you used it before? What do you think about it? Also, if you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for further content, and then I see you next time.